Today I'm going to show you how to change the color of any object in simulation nodes based in the velocity. So let's do it. Let's start creating a particle emitter in geometry nodes. I'm going to use for this example a UV sphere because I want to do a perfect explosion like a sphere. So let's convert this object in points with distributed points on faces. And to animate this, let's use simulation zone. Let's get this here and this here. Okay, so right now we have this, and what I want is to move these points in the normal of this object. So, this object. So, let's create the initial velocity, like always, with store name attribute, and select vector. Let's call this velocity. And to get the normal of this object, we can get it from here. So, we don't have to worry. And let's call this initial velocity. Now, to move these points, as you can see, if we press play, nothing happens because we need to add here a set position and use this attribute with name attribute. So let's copy this and paste it here and connect it here to say, hey, use this vector to move this point. Now, if we press play, we have like this explosion where the points are going really far, because they don't stop. So, first of all, I'm going to convert this in instance on points and spheres, so we can see better these points. Give it sphere, and let's decrease this. Something like this, maybe. Okay, I'm going to set this view and add a material. Set material, the default material. Now, what we want is to reduce this velocity or increase it. But for now, I'm going to reduce it. Why? Because if we want to learn how to change the color of these objects based on the velocity, we need to apply a change in the velocity. If not, there is no point to change the color, right? So let's apply an update to this attribute. Let's move this and let's use again store name attribute. Copy this, paste it here, select vector, reduce this. And we need to do a change for every frame. So what we're going to do is basically to reduce the velocity. To do this, we have to use vector math and select scale. So we multiply this velocity. If you're like that, if you multiply by one, it's the same. However, if you want to slow down, reduce this velocity, we need to multiply it by a number that is lower than this number. For example, 0 0.9. And that means that every frame, the velocity will be multiplied by this number, so every new frame will be lower, lower, and lower until it stops. Let's press play and see. As you can see, we create like an explosion where the particles stops. Perfect. If you make this number lower, it will stop sooner because the operation is faster to get 0. As you can see. Okay, I'm going to leave it in 0 0.9. And now what we want is to change the color of this based in the velocity. So how we do that? To do this, we need to go in the shade editor, not this one, here. Remember we have already a material here. So let's open this. I'm going to hide this, press N. And we need to use this attribute, right? The velocity. That is the information how fast the particles go. So we can bring any attribute with attribute. Let's copy this, or you can write it here. And what we want is to connect it here, but we need to add a color RAM to say, hey, change the color based in the velocity. So let me add some colors here. Okay, I add these colors so we can see better how the velocity affects to the color. Now, if we press play, it's not working, first of all, because these objects are not points, are instance. So here, you need to select Instancer. And if we press play, or before we press play, we can see that this is working, but not perfectly. Let's press play. And we can see that something is not working. It's working, but not. 
because we need to do something else here. We cannot just do this. What we have to do, remember, velocity is a vector. A vector has three values, x, y, and z. So we cannot connect these three values directly here because this is a factor, a float. So we need to convert the vector in a float. How we can do that? We can do that thanks to vector math and select length. Thanks to this, we are converting this vector in a single value, in a float. And thanks to this, you can color grade the velocity to colors. So if you get it here, and now if we press play, you can see that before we press play, it's already more or less this color. And if I press play, the particles change the color based in the velocity. When they stop, they have this color. I'm going to change this and make it more blue so we can see better and make a little big these particles. So this is how it works. Now, why we cannot see red? As you can see, we cannot see red because the velocity, the start velocity is not one. So we need to add a map range here if you want to change the colors. How map range works. So this two that says two is selecting all the range of the colors. This is zero and this is one. So if you leave it like that, you are saying use from here to here. And the question is for what? For the velocity. Now this value is being ranged in these two values. So when the velocity is zero will be this color because it's zero. When the velocity or this value is one, maximum one, will be this color, red, because one, one. However, if the velocity is not one maximum, that means that we cannot see this color. That's why we already see this color. And how I know this? Because we are multiplying by 0 0.9. That means, for example, if I decrease this, you can see that the color is changing because the initial velocity is not maximum 1. So, for example, 0 0.5, that means that more or less is here. So we are going to see only this range of colors. So, to sum up, if you want to see red, what you can do is to decrease this number. Because if you decrease the number, you are saying that the red should start in a lower velocity. So let's say, for example, 0 0.9. And now, if I press play, we can see how the particles change the color perfectly. If you want to see better, what we can do is to disconnect this and add it with join. Let's get it here. And if I don't change the position, the seat, we will see like a trace. Look. And now we can see better. So you can do this and pause. And now, thanks to this, look. I can say what I want the red, as you can see, or the blue. Maybe I want the blue to start not in zero, maybe sooner. I can increase this and make it here. So you get it there, right? How it works. By the way, I want more blue. And look how beautiful this looks. But that's not the point. The point is to see how it works. So I'm going to leave it in 0.9. And blue will be zero. Okay. Now I don't want to see this. I want the particles, the new particles that are being added, change the position. So all we have to do is to add here a scene time frame. Let's start again. However, now we have too many points. As you can see, it's too crazy. So let's decrease this number. One. And let's start again. And now we have this really cool effect. As you can see, all the points are going like in a place that they have the same distance because they're using the faces of this. So you can add more faces, more segments and rings to not see this distance perfectly. Or what you can do, another option, is to use instead of a UV sphere, an echo sphere, and connect it here. And if you want to 
reduce this space, we need to subdivide more, remember? Because we need to add more faces, right? So something like four. And now if we press play, we have this effect where we can see they have the same distance, but it's not like before. Now, another thing we can do, if you want, is to delete these points after some age, after a lifetime. So let's do it fast so we can see better this effect. Let me call this reduce velocity. And to add an age, we need to use a store name attribute. Let's write age will be a float, actually will be an integer. And let's use a math because we want to add one value every new frame. So let's say one and let's bring a name attribute with the same attribute. And let's copy here and go into here. So basically with this, we can create like an age. Every new frame, we have like a list with a number that is being increased one number every frame. And you can see this because if I change this to a spreadsheet and I select the instance, here we have the age. So if I press play, you can see how all the particles have an age because every new frame we're stacking one value. Okay, so now we can use this information to delete it. So let's use delete and we want to use this and what I want is to use greater than. So what we can do is to say when the age is greater than something, than 20, delete the point. So now the age will never go up than 20. As you can see, we are deleting the particles. I'm going to increase a little bit this so we can see better the blue. And thanks to this, you can create this really cool effect where we have these points that change the color based in the velocity. Another thing you can do is that when we start, as you can see, let me start in zero, zero and zero. So we see better this effect. Now I want to show you how to convert this in rails with a simple trick. We are not going to convert it in rails, but we are going to fake rails if we use this effect with a sphere. So to do this is really easy. The only thing we have to do is that instead of UV spheres, we're going to use curved lines. Let's connect it here, but we need to give a mesh to this. So let's convert it curve to mesh, select this and use a curve cycle. So right now we have this that is really ugly. We can decrease the radius and we want these lines pointing out in the normal of the object. That actually is the velocity, right? Because it's the same. So what we can do is to bring this, make a copy and connect it here. But before we need to use a line rotation to vector. And now if we connect this, that is the normal of the sphere here in the vector, the lines are pointing out. Let's decrease the radius a little bit. Another thing we can do to make it better is to make the lines longer when the velocity is faster. And when the velocity is lower, make it shorter. To do this, we can apply the same logic like before because we have already the velocity. So let's copy this. And to change the size, I'm going to use this. So let's use combine. And now we are not going to see anything because it's a zero. So let's write one. And what we can do is to connect this here, but not like that. Remember, we need to convert it in a float because this is a float. So let's use like before this. I don't know if I can copy from here. OK, perfect. Now we are converting this to a value. And if we connect it here, basically what we are saying is when the velocity is really fast, be one or be the value that is this. And when the velocity is shorter or this stops, then the line, the scale of this axis will be zero because the Z, sorry, maybe I didn't say it, 
is to make it like that, as you can see. So if we leave it like that, we have this really cool effect. We can make it bright if we connect this in emission. Let's say something like 10. And let's go here. Select always. And let's go to compositor and bring our beautiful note glare. And let's say something like blue. And we have this really cool effect. And you can play with the radius to make it, I don't know if it's here, yes, to make it bigger or smaller. A thing like that is perfect. And also you can arrange this if you want. Like before, we can go here, remember? If you don't remember, no, here, no, sorry. And use a map range to map range this. So it's the same logic. What we can do is that now is not the colors this. This is the scale. So when the velocity is this, we can say be longer, as you can see, or be shorter. So let's see. Okay, but I think I'm going to leave it like before. Maybe I'm going to select 0 0.9. No, I want to make it longer. Anyway, the point is to show you more tricks so you can create different animations thanks to all this that I'm teaching you. Let's go here and let's make the background dark. And if you want to see this line from the start, from the frame 0 or 1, we can decrease this to hide it, right? So we can add a keyframe, select 0, add a keyframe, move a frame, and select, for example, 1. And insert another keyframe. So the first frame, we don't see any line. And with this, you know how to color grade any object based in the velocity and also how to do this really cool effect. If you like this video, give a like, subscribe, and remember, you can do this project and many more on my Patreon. And see you in the next video.